Okay, here we are on page 15. On page 15, we are basically just drawing diagrams. We're not working out problems because we want to do as many bearing problems as possible. And the hard part of the bearing problems is basically drawing the picture, right? Okay, we are also focusing on the three-digit uh, bearing, three-digit three pairing angle problems, not the northeast, west, south, because the bearing problems are the ones that, the three-digit ones are the most uh, common. So draw a diagram showing the situation below. Label the direction north when appropriate and known distances and angles. Mark the bearing of the ship S from the station P. Okay, so two Coast Guard stations, P and Q, are 25 kilometers apart. Q is due east of P. A ship, S, is at a distance of 18 kilometers from P and 20 kilometers from Q. Ooh, that sounds very confusing, doesn't it? So let's just take a step, one step at a time. So two Coast Guard stations, P and Q, are 25 kilometers apart. Okay, we don't know how to draw these yet because we don't know the angle between the two. So we're going to read a little bit more. Q is due east of P. Ah, okay, so Q is to the east of P. It's exactly east of P. So now I know I can draw them like this. And we know that they're 25 kilometers apart because that was the first sentence. A ship, S, is at a distance 18 kilometers from P and 20 kilometers from Q. So um, we, what we don't know is we don't know if it's like up here or down here, but that doesn't really matter because the distances are going to be the same no matter if it's above or below. So you can choose either way, right? I'm going to choose down because there's more space down. So a ship S is at a distance 18 from P. So let's say that this is 18 and 20 from Q. So basically it would be like that. Even if you don't draw the 18 a little bit smaller than the 20, if it's not in scale, that's normal in math when we make diagrams that's not perfectly in scale. Uh, we need to be able to solve the problem even if the drawing isn't perfect. Okay? All right, next one. Draw a diagram for the mobile phone mast poles with antennas positions, mast positions below. So, so basically, it's just saying, what is a mobile phone mast? It is a pole with an antenna. Okay. Um, label the direction north when, where, when appropriate and known distances and angles. Mark the angle corresponding to the bearing of mast P from mast R. Okay. So um, mast Q is on a bearing of 100 degrees from mast P and is 40 kilometers away. So from mast P. So we'll start with P. And we'll say, okay, mass Q is going to go on a direction of 100 degrees from mass P. Remember, the 100 degrees is measured directly from north. So 100 degrees is slightly more than 90 degrees. So basically, it's this direction that you're going, right? Maybe it's a little, I, I went a little bit too far. Okay, so maybe it's like that, okay? So it's 100 degrees from north and is 40 kilometers away. So this distance here is 40. And then the bearing of mast R from mast Q is 150 degrees. So the bearing of mast R, um, oh, by the way, mast Q is on a bearing from mast P. So I forgot, I, this is actually Q here, right? Okay, so let's reread again just to make sure we did it right. Mast Q is on a bearing of 100 degrees from mast P and is 40 kilometers away. Yeah, we've done that perfectly. The bearing of mast R from mast Q is 150 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to draw north again just to know what our reference is. And then we're going to, now we're going to measure 150 degrees from this north uh, reference. Remember, 150 degrees is almost down south, right? 150 degrees is almost 180. So it would be like this. And uh, mast P and R are 60. Oh, mast P and R, but they were talking about R and Q. So they don't give us the distance from R and Q. They just tell us that mast R is 100, uh, 150 degrees from mast Q, which here we've drawn that. And then they tell us that mast P and R are 66 kilometers apart. So that means this distance here is 66. So you can see how this could become a very interesting non-right triangle problem, right? Um, what else? We mark the angle corresponding to the bearing of the mast P from mast R. So what they're saying is, okay, the angle that we want to mark additionally would be this angle here. It is the bearing of mast, 
Oh, Matt, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. They want to know mass P from mass R, not mass R from mass P. So in order to do that, let's draw the north reference for mass R because that's the from point, right, from mass R. And then we're going to draw the bearing all the way to P, right? So this bearing here is the, the bearing that we wanted to draw, okay? It is the bearing of mass P from mass R. And we don't need to calculate what that angle is. That would be a huge, difficult trig problem. So what we want to do is just to be able to draw the picture, which is definitely very simple. Okay, last problem. The last problem says, dry a diagram showing the situation below. Label the direction north where appropriate and known distance and angles. Mark the bearing in which Bruce hit his first stroke. Okay, so uh, this is a golf problem, which they love to do for trig and for bearings. Remember, in golf, um, you hit the ball multiple times from a starting point until you get it into the hole, okay? Um, you don't really need to know what a par 3 hole is. Uh, it just means it typically takes three strokes to get into the, the hole if you're a really good player. Uh, the T is the starting point. You need to know what that means. So the T is the starting point, and it is a distance of 130 meters due west from the pin. And the pin, of course, is the flag that you... Um, have stuck into the hole. So we know that the T is um, 130 due west from P. So it looks kind of like that, right? And on his first shot, Bruce hit the ball 100 meters, but not at the correct angle. On his second shot, he hits the ball 35 meters and gets it into the hole. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, does that mean he hit it to the right or to the left? This is similar to the first problem on this page, which it doesn't matter if you hit it to the right or to the left. The triangle will have the same side length, and that's the important thing. So let's draw it down because that's the space we have. So I'm going to draw, uh, so Bruce hit it at 100, or he hit it at 100 meters, but slightly off from the straight angle. And then on his second shot, he hit it 35 meters and it gets into the hole. So that means he got it into the hole in two strokes, which is much better than par three. Good job, Bruce. Okay, and so now I think we're already done. So on his first shot, he hit the ball 100 meters. He hit it to the right in this drawing, or although we could have hit it to the left if you wanted to, you would get the same proportions. And then after he hit it uh, 100 meters off the, off, uh, the, to the side, then he hit it 35 meters into the pin, so that would be the third side of the triangle. So we have a triangle drawn, a non-right triangle, and you can see how this could become uh, a trig problem. Not uh, too difficult of a trig problem, but it could be a trig problem because now we have all these sides. Okay, and let's see, what else should we do? We label the direction north when appropriate and known distances and angles. We don't know any other angles, okay? Mark the bearing in which Bruce hit his first stroke. Okay, so remember, bearing with three digits, you start with north pointing up, right? And so the bearing of his first shot would, the, would be this 100 meter shot, and so the bearing would be measured clockwise from there, so that would be the bearing here. I'm just gonna mark it B here. All right, that's it, we're done. Maybe in, in, a, in, in an exam, you might draw this picture, and then maybe they might ask you what B is or something.